Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to our Feast for Crows uh, stream. I'm so sorry about the late start. I've been having technical issues all weekend. So uh, it's Murphy's Law, you know, as soon as one thing goes wrong, they all go wrong. Um, Johnny's already in the chat. Johnny's video. Hi Johnny. Hi Johnny. Uh, <laughs> Johnny's vid is doing a live stream. I, th I'm not, I can't remember, it's the 21st. When is that? Tuesday? Um, yes. He, him and Elamore and Mackenzie are starting a World of Ice and Fire reread. So they're doing the Dawn Age. It'll be oh 6 p.m. 6 p.m. UK time on uh, Tuesday, the 21st. I think that's Tuesday. And uh, hey, AU, how are you? Uh, so I'll ha I have it linked down below. So I'm really excited about it. I've got my World of Ice and Fire on the table, so I need to find some time to reread that section. Yeah, that would be fascinating, actually. I, I, um, I might I might kind of join al along with that and dig out World of Ice and yeah, Fire. Yeah, I definitely I'm looking over here to see if I can see it on the bookshelf. Kind of figure out because I've found it difficult to read. Yeah, yeah I found it really difficult to read. It was kind of um, well, I suppose it's a reference book, isn't it? So it doesn't, yeah. it, it, there isn't a, a narrative as such. But there's some some things in there that just make me think, what? And you, but you've got to think about it being written from the perspective of a meister and considering what we talked about last week about meisters controlling all the knowledge mm -hmm. and you know you know what they want you to know or what they're allowing you to know kind of so yeah that sounds brilliant yeah so that's the 21st 6 p.m uk time and i'm so excited so johnny will definitely be there feel free to drop another link in the chat if you want but it is linked below this video so um you can check that out later on uh so yes claire hi how are you hi i'm fine um, thank you is this our first all female pov week um I yes and i hadn't even realized that i hadn't even realized it but yes you're right yeah um and yeah so uh we're reading from or we're discussing from brienne four to cersei five this week next week we'll be doing um brienne five to the reaver that's victorian right um mm -hmm. so yeah so we'll be back to that next week uh i guess we'll get started was there anything in general you wanted to highlight about this week by the way both of us will probably be nibbling throughout this because both of us <laughs> <are> hectic days <laughs> crazy yeah um no just that i'm really enjoying it i'm yeah. I, I, i'm i'm still enjoying this book i think probably more than any of the others up to this point some of the i mean even though this this to me this this week's brienne chapter was a little bit kind of like oh just really? oh i loved yeah. it yeah but there's a lot of stuff in it when i went back yeah. and kind of read through my notes it was like mm, actually yeah this is quite an interesting chapter i love the aria chapter this week that was my favorite i think yeah i i loved the brienne chapter brienne four it mm. felt like um it's almost like that kind of the fellowship of the ring you know you're just traveling through this part of westeros that we haven't seen too much of and just getting all these sm the small folk history so i really like mm -hmm. that hi sunny mm -hmm. and iron throne um so yeah i guess we'll just jump into brienne four um i i was interested in dick's take on history from the perspective of the small folk and this kind of litany of Targ loyalists, is there any kind of significance? Should we be paying attention? I mean, the name that kind of jumps out at me is Lucifer Hardy, just because of the name Lucifer. Mm. Um, and he's listed as one of the, one of the main guys that followed uh, Rhaegar. Oh, oh, ha ah Hardy is, I'm not sure if it's Lucifer Hardy, but just kind of interesting kind of tidbits and I'm not sure if we're supposed to be paying close attention to that. Uh, I, I think we probably should be whether or not I do I'm not but you, you know <laughs> yeah but it, it, I, I mean I make note of certain things like the crack bones of plaque crack claw that's a tongue twister the crack bones of crack claw apparently were first men they had the blood of the first men but they're also described as good dragon men yes and the two just don't seem to quite sit i in my mind the first men I agree and the and being a dragon 
man or dragon you know a targaryen supporter would be two separate things which then made me think well maybe it's not maybe there is there is more of a connection between the first men and the valyrians than we actually thought um i i mean i did i did make a note of the i mean the squishers tale usually i just kind of you know it's one of those amusing things where it's like oh you know nimble dick but i actually had some thoughts about it this time about the the concept of like magical beings or kind of like magical but not the magical animals this is more like magical humanoid beings um the the fact that i mean you've got all the guys this thing about the sort of nursery rhymes and and songs and tales of lore and all this kind of thing but but actually i think there's something i think i think maybe i, I mean we could have a completely separate discussion about magical beings in a song of ice and fire but they're described as being very much from the sea, so scales with webbed fingers and webbed feet. And then there's the nursery rhyme bit about, you know, they um, they, they they chase the children. You know, there is always this thing, isn't there, about, and they're going to come and get you, yeah. the bogeyman kind of thing. So this is the squishers of the sort of uh, the bogeyman version of this particular area. Um, they like to chase after the girls and breed with them and eat the young boys, which is supposed to absolutely terrify Pod. But um, I just thought I, that sounds. At first, my first notion was: this, is there some connection there to the others? So, and then I and then I always go back to my formula of the the kind of elements, the elemental aspect to it. So you've got ice, fire you know the water air earth that kind of thing and where this so so if you start from that as a basis like elemental forces and then magical forces that are created from each of those elemental forces and then from that magical creatures and magical beings that emanate from that magical force so with ice you've got the others and you've got the resurrection of the of the whites with air you've got I, I mean could you call it air maybe the stone men you know the, yeah, the that's kind of an airborne so. thing grayscale mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um fire you've obviously got resurrection as well you've got the fire resurrection you you know the the fire whites but you've also got the shadow monsters as well you know the shadow babies um and then here could this be like the water the water elements version of this magical uh you know the magical beings magical creatures being the squishers that's what Aileen um, says i think i'm not sure if he's joking but maybe water whites yes yeah yeah possibly yeah possibly and the and the stone men are like stone whites um but with the stone men it's more are they resurrected isn't it isn't it they get they just continue to progressively like get covered with grayscale and Ultimately, they, I mean, die eventually. Yeah, do they die and then reanimated with within? I, I'm not. I'm not quite sure. Um, or are they like? Um, do you know in um, I Am Legend the zombies there? There's a the suggestion that they're not yeah. dead people. They're people that are diseased and mm -hmm. then on this kind of undead. I'm not. I haven't read the book, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure if it's like that in the book. But that certainly seems to be the case with the movie. But I'm not sure um mm. just to say hi to Mackenzie and bbm hi how are you um uh Mackenzie, i made you a moderator so you can link that stream they had a great stream the other night if you want to link it in the chat please feel free to do so where does this happen does it happen on johnny's channel johnny's lmrs and Mackenzie's, but johnny has the, the they're they're launching the world of ice and fire stream this tuesday this tuesday yeah. right okay so okay. um i'll definitely be there in the chat taking notes furiously um <laughs> but uh yeah i i the squishers thing i don't know i mean he does do a lot of winking and tongue and cheek stuff then they're kind of right rising pod um but there's so much mentioned in this chapter like yeah. you're mentioning there across the magical world you've got the dragons you've got this reference to ogres you've got reference to and just to bring back to the the crack claw the men of crack claw 
watering the pine trees with blood. And yes. the pine trees in this chapter are almost a separate character in this mm -hmm. chapter. They're mm -hmm. scratching at Brianne at one stage. Yeah. And yeah. you mentioned Dick singing his songs. Mm. They drink in his songs to yeah. the point where they silence him. Yeah. Um, and Pod is really afraid. He doesn't mm -hmm. like it. It's, Pod is our whole door in this situation. He doesn't like it. Um, and Brienne really doesn't like it either. It's really creepy. The pines are really, really creepy. And I just wonder, are they all pines? Or is there have the pines kind of crossbred? Is it a new species of tree? Is there an element of weirwoods in there? Um, it's well, it talks, uh, it, it, the, the whole portion of that chapter when they're getting to the, the ruins where they run into Shagwell and Timian and everything, but that journey is, is a very oppressive. They all experience it. There's just, and you know, and it, and, it, and it triggers things like Brienne starts to think about. It's one of those atmospheres that just brings everyone down. And Brienne starts thinking about her failures and how she didn't, you know, she didn't save Renly and she didn't save um, Catelyn Stark. And she, you know, she really starts kind of backtracking and, and um, doubting herself. And it, it, it talks about the pine trees, but it also talks about ancient strongholds that have been covered in moss. So it's almost like there was some sort of civilization there before that's just i know everything's a ruin at the moment everything is a complete ruin and somebody in one of the chapters mentions about westeros is just a sea of dead bodies and the and the crows packing you know obviously feast for crows but um there also seems to be some something of a there's a sort of element of there's ruins there and things that were there from ancient times that have just been like moss has just grown over it it again it's just this there's history there where things have just been covered over and grown over that when we're, we're not going to find you know we don't need to know about that yet or you know something to be revealed again in the future but i, I just maybe there, there were weirwoods there possibly there's something very dreamlike and very kind of nightmarish about that whole situation it, it could be that it's haunted it could be as simple as that that this mm -hmm. is um the 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 first men were trying to emulate or copy the the mm -hmm. inhabitants that were there before them so they 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 saw maybe sacrifice the weirwoods yeah and they thought well maybe we should Put, like put blood on our trees or something like that maybe it's some kind of the pine trees were watered in blood yeah it's a great line <laughs> that sounds really creepy yeah. to me it's, it's a really creepy chapter though mm, it's a, mm. like it's one that kind of takes you it creeps up on you just like the pines it yeah. really does yeah yeah uh, because you don't expect like you don't expect Rorg and Biter and you know, they, you don't ex or Shagwell to come out of the 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 woodwork literally. Um, yes. Yeah. And even before that, like they hear this whispering all around them, and Brienne is mm. kind of thinking, "Oh, it's the waves. It, it's definitely the waves." Mm. And it is. It's still questionable whether it is the guy. It's it's the guys they're going to come upon, or if it's just the waves, or if it's a combination mm. of this kind of haunted kind of wood that they're in. But yeah. It seems though it's it's interesting the way you said about Brienne and how all of her insecurities come out. It is it if you think about it, every it the worst of everybody's nature comes out. Mm. The closer they get to the north, almost, or the closer the the more in like the deeper they get into this woods. Mm. Like Podrick gets more afraid. Dick gets more. Uh, he lies more. He exaggerates mm. more. He tries to steal from her. Mm. By the way, that plan to cover her coin in flour was genius. Um, <laughs> but it's just, it's, um, there's something maybe to, the, the, about it, your weakness is in the, the low parts of your human nature. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like that's, mm. like if the others are going to win, they're going to win because human beings are being petty and lost in the bad sides of their own nature right yeah they're getting yeah. distracted by their yeah. petty squabbles 
they're yeah. not playing to the, the 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 better versions of themselves absolutely and so it feels like that with brienne and it's interesting because when sir hyle shows up all i was thinking at the end of this chapter is like where have you been you fuck Mm. You, couldn't, you couldn't have mm. showed up a bit sooner than this were you just wait and see what brienne was gonna do yeah what she's capable of yeah so yeah. i don't trust him at all no and i don't think stoneheart does either so i don't think we'll see him i know he was hung but i don't think we're gonna see him surviving that no so yeah. I, 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 what, what, I mean which makes you think what was he what you know what was he doing there in the first place mm -hmm. it could just be that it's a it's a signal for us as readers that we know that he was sent there by Tali. I got from that that um, Tali is um, I think the dog's just fucked. <laughs> I can smell something really. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> we can smell it. It's fine. Really. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa, my eyes watering. You got to open um, the window. That's well, Marwin. It really Marwin. is. Marwin. I just Marwin have to double check. It really is just a just wind. But wow, Marwin is sneaky oh. like that, though. Bloody hell! Um, he takes after his namesake. Oh my god, I, I can't bear it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, uh, guys, thank you so much in the chat for your support. That's amazing. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think of Brienne chapters, actually, in general, because. Uh, Claire and myself are big fans, and I know in the fandom that people don't take to Brienne chapters that much. Although I suspect Brienne's chapters are going to be the most interesting in wins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do expect them to get more interesting. I lo I just loved the descriptions all along the coast because we actually haven't seen that much of the coast in in POVs really. I mean, we saw a bit with Arya, a little bit on Dragonstone, and a bit with Davos, but not not a mm. huge amount. And I felt like this the, this chapter was really good at kind of bringing you along um, for that. Um, I was very drawn in, like you were, with um, the stuff that that um, Nimble Dick is talking about. Um, there's they're talking about uh, the maid and i can't remember his name i'm gonna have to look it up i think it's garen um and they they have this the legend of the just maid which i completely forgot about the sword the just maid um and i wonder um, is that the small folk version of azora high is that like a similar because there's kind of there's a few parallels there Oh, and Sir Galahad. Yeah, Sir Galahad. Yeah, thank yeah, you. The perfect knight. Oh, G Galadon, sorry. Which does sound very much like Gal Galahad. It does, um, yeah. Maybe, maybe it is, yeah, the, the the perfect knight, the notion of the perfect knight. Um, and just the idea that the the maiden mm. gave uh gave herself to him or gave him this sword, which mm. they call the just maid. And he unsheeded it only three times, which could be anything, right? Mm. It could be, that could totally be a metaphor. The just made might totally be a metaphor, a phallic symbol or something. Yeah, yeah. Because he doesn't use it to shed blood or something like that. It's um, it's a very strange little story. Mm. George is constantly teasing us with this story. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. There's, there's some little nuggets in there that just... Uh, does this and, and this book in particular i think is full of them absolutely yeah. full of them i think is that significant could that mean that um like for example just dropped into this chapter is the is a meant is the mention that brienne hates roses mm -hmm. like it's pointed out that she hated roses which just makes me think does the, the tyrells and does that mean that she's going to ha have a hand in their downfall yeah. Or equally, does it mean that one of the Tyrells is going to end Brienne? I just think there's maybe there's something there. There's a couple of things actually in this chapter in terms of references to Brienne and theories that have been around in the fandom for quite a while. One of them being that uh, Brienne is uh, like an uh, ancestor of Dunk. 
and in this chapter the pines that we talked about you know that the forest and the moss and everything being oppressive she talks about this blanket of pines being as thick as a castle wall um and i think oh, that just uh, that must be that like just that line must be where everybody's gone yep that's where it is that's where the that's that's the ancestor of dunk i don't know how quite but um and when the pine trees are scratching her they're actually scratching at the shield yes which we which it, it has a similar she had it painted similarly to uh dunk's shield right yes yeah and also i mean when she's talking about when she's talking about what you know when she was training with the master at arms at starfall not starfall where's she from from tarth i sorry i stuffed something in my mouth I could not... sapphire isle not starfall but yeah when she was training when she was younger and the master at arms said to her just you know remember that if you hesitate you're done for so don't flinch do not flinch and she's praying that she won't flinch and she doesn't later on when she fights she doesn't but it just makes me my my question um one of the questions that i've got for this chapter in fact the only question i've got is will brienne flinch at some point will there be something that happens that causes her to hesitate and then that will kind of that will that will be terribly bittersweet for Brienne and for Brienne fans um it 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 is funny because the way she recalls those kind of training mantras in her head it's very mm. similar to Arya yeah yeah so and I, I know they set them up they pen, like set them up kind of against each other in a kind of a um a training in the show it, it I wonder if she ended up fighting Arya, would she let Arya win or would she flinch because of her duty to Cat? She may. Uh, it, it just it, it was just that the whole story was making such a point about it. I will not, I will not flinch. And again, as a reader, you get that sense of, yay, this pumping moment for Brienne, Brienne where she kind of, you know, I mean, because I don't know if she's actually killed anyone before. That's a good question. Yeah, I I mean, when she's recalling her training, she's talking about how she was sent to kill pigs and piglets and sheep and that, you know, as part of her training. But and that was horrific. She was in floods of tears when when all that, you know, it was it was just horrible. Um, and when she was in the Rainbow Guard, as you know, Ren Renly's um, Kingsguard, that uh, then I don't I don't know I don't know if I, up until this point if Brienne has actually killed anybody uh I'm, I'm guessing not because of how the fight was described and how uh you know it's a bit of a moment for her and um, she does that you know I didn't flinch I didn't flinch and did yeah. she kill did they kill somebody when um they were with Clea Frey no did, did she I don't think she did no I mean she was fighting with Jamie but I don't think, I don't think they did well, before they got that. That would lend weight to that whole conversation about the just made and mm. the honor and all that. That mm. would kind of, if if this is the first time she kills somebody, mm. I think so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, let me know what you know. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, is this the first time. Thanks for thanks for coming by, Johnny. We'll be we'll see you on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to uh, watching you guys. Um, I. I'm just re this chapter just made me really think about Targaryen alliances and is something of note going to happen here where Danny or Aegon or somebody will be in that area and all these families will come out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> all these families will come out. <laughs> is he okay? All right. <laughs> Okay, Marwin, it was only an idea. Jeez, give us a break. <laughs> Fine, we'll move on to Queen Major. God, so, so cranky. Um, that just one more thing, which I was talking about before that evil fart, was um, Heil, Sir Heil Hunt. Yes. 
possibly the reason that he's been mentioned in the story, the purpose of him being there and following her, to me, for, I got from that, that, oh, he's been sent by Tali, which to me as the reader is pointing out that Tali is actually pretty organised. He's got fingers everywhere. He's, he's very, uh, I'm going to put it this way, he's definitely more competent than Cersei is at oh, this point. Totally. Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, that might just be reminding us, uh, reminding the reader that, oh, don't forget about Tali. Well, actually, we should put a pin in that mm -hmm. because I wonder, is he is he a little finger, is that somebody little finger might try and work with if they wanted to take down Cersei because little finger brings that up in, a, in Elaine's chapter. Mm. That, Cer he, that Cersei isn't ready to be removed from the game. And I kind of wonder, how is he going to do that? You kind of need a Tywin-like character. And Randall Tarly is next to Littlefinger, our most Tywin-esque character, really, in the yes. books now, in the series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So the epic, the queen maker. <laughs> yeah. I'm still confused. <laughs> I know Ariane is still, I know Ariane is confused, but I, I know everybody's confused. By the way, <laughs> In case you haven't seen it in a while, I linked down below Preston's, Preston Jacobs' video, A Song for Marcella, because uh, it's really well done, and he breaks down this chapter, and I think it's mainly this chapter and The Princess in the Tower, but mainly mm. The Queen Maker. Um, I, 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 blah, where do we start? Um, Gerald Dane, maybe that's a good place to start. Yes. Dark Star was Dark Star. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. So here's my question. He was also the best looking guy in Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he sounds mm. hot. Yeah. I kind of feel like I was I was trying to, I th in my head when I think of him, I kind of think of a blonde Chris Evans, you know, the guy who plays Captain America. Oh, He's right. A really yeah. good jawline, but he can kind of turn on the mean when he needs to. That kind of idea. That's That's what <laughs> I have in my head. See, when you said Chris Evans, I immediately go to Chris Evans, radio DJ, <laughs> and it's like, no, the, compl the complete opposite no, of that. Now I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he seems very, uh, he's very kind of swashbuckling, isn't he? Uh, yeah. He's almost... I do, I, I'm I, in a way. I'm glad that we've not visited this character in the TV show, considering the shit show they made of the Sand Snakes. They would have just completely ruined this interesting character. I know that this character has the fandom split, and I know that George in the past has been like, "Why is everyone taking the piss out of Dark Star? He's he's like, you know, he's a real hard man, and he's like, you know, he's he's a force to be reckoned with." And we're all like. <laughs> Yeah, George. But you know, who knows? I um, I don't know because like George, I don't know why George is surprised because he hasn't really given us characters too many characters like this, where they're likable. Um, mm. I mean, the one person he has given is Arthur Dane, and this guy tears him to shreds, mm. pretty much. So it's you know i mean i'm interested in just did, did when you first got when you first met him did it change your view of the shara or arthur in any way because they're kind of deified by people almost. yeah yeah it it kind of does make me wonder are these people really i mean ion says uh the danes are nothing but trouble mm. but it kind of, this guy seems to be definitely I mean, if the Danes are working with the Starks, maybe that explains. Or if they were, if they were allied with the Starks, maybe that explains why they killed. Well, they, yeah, them. they're a complete, or... complete mystery. I mean, if we were able to go and visit another location, two, I'd like mm -hmm. to go and see what's happening with the Reeds, uh, at their location, and I would like to see what's happening at Starfall. But you know, unlikely that we're, we'll ever find out. So tough, Starfall or Greywater Watch. Let us know in the mm. chat or in the comments down below which one would you like to see first. I mean, we're probably going to get Greywater Watch in wins, so I think. I um, think I think we might, yeah. Well, Starfall. I'd like Starfall. Um, so here's my question: It doesn't actually say in this chapter that he attacks Marcella. 
and Ariane is told that in in her next chapter because I, I went to check because mm. like I was trying to think is like why would he do this mm. and how does he even get the opportunity to do it and escape when Ario has like like a dozen men with him or something mm. he has he's got, got quite a lot of crossbow men with him so I'm not really sure how he if he did it to, if he maybe, did it why maybe, he did it and yeah. how he got away with it who knows uh, maybe it wasn't even maybe it wasn't him I don't know because Ariane kind of blacks out a bit and mm. to, the point, to the point where we're like maybe she did it <laughs> she doesn't remember mm. and they're blaming him for some reason I don't know it's I could get very Preston Jacobs on this now but um, <laughs> it's a very strange scene and because she is so in shock and how wrong everything or how badly everything is gone yeah. She doesn't record things accurately except for Oakhart's death, but I would call it a sacrifice because he basically yeah. drives himself into the axe. Um, well, uh, Henry, but, well, that was one of my questions was why was he such a fool? Why did he, why did he do There was absolutely no need for him to do that. I think it was suicide. I think was. he, I think he, he he was so troubled by um you know by losing his honor that he just couldn't deal with it anymore and so, and, and i don't know whether or not Ari ariane will ever understand that or come to terms with it or whether it's just fodder it's just somebody else who advances her scheme and her plot but it's in a way that it's it's really quite tragic well so you are you familiar with Preston's theory on this no that it's not Marcella it's the other little girl that they bought Rosamond I think is her name that that's who's with them that when they came to Dorne they never swapped those kids back and he has quite compelling evidence for this because he's quite actually I was evidence. just about to say yeah, yeah that sounds like Preston however in this isn't it in this chapter that it's described that Marcella was in in quite a, a bit of detail about how they nobody could tell them apart, and yes. she's she's been like the yes. you know they've done the old switcheroo. Because so I've actually made um, <clears throat> yeah, she was disguised with brown hair on her way to dawn, Marcella. Yes. And my note is that disguising disguising princes and princesses is seems commonplace. It's a it's a you know they uh, there must be. A roaring trade in like Myrish hair dyes because they're all at it. Sansa's doing it, Marcella's doing it. There's there's somebody up at so, um yeah. at White Harbor that's got that's dyed her hair green yeah. and you know, there's just there's see there's there's something there about Plus, it. I mean, Doran is the you know, it's the, the original baby swap area for us in this series right with tower of joy if we want to think that there may have been a baby swap or something do you know we can't discount this as being no i, I actually grow to quite... the plot and and i know i know like for example tony teflon i know i've spoken to him before and he'll roll his eyes about oh not another effing baby swap and and it's like yeah i know it does seem like kind of lazy writing to to an extent However, if you put it into the context of, you know, there's no video evidence, that nobody has a photograph, you can't just go and take a picture of someone to, to document their likeness. You've got singers and you've got people who, you've got artists like the woman who did the, the mural that where Brienne bought her shield from. But, I mean, there's there's so much inaccuracy that they're bound to be taking advantage of that how would you ever know no, i mean so even people like it, it's it's commonplace you don't you don't have to have magical powers to have no. a glamour you just need a bit of myrish hair dye and be able to kind of walk in a no, slightly I mean, different way or carry you see nobody, like yeah. nobody pays attention to marcella prior to mm. Tyrion sending her to Dorne, nobody really pays attention to her. This mm -hmm. girl is, I think she is like a distant cousin, the girl that she's swapping out with. 
Yeah. So Cressa Jacobs makes the point yes, that she's they could a, look she's, exactly alike. She's a she, Lannister, Lannister, yeah. not a Castle Rock Lannister, but very she's, similar. She's also nearly 13 mm. and Marcella is nearly 10, mm. which is quite a big difference. And his point is it would make more um it would make more sense if Tristan was attracted to the older girl rather than, than the te ten year old. Yeah, 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 if that makes sense. So where does he think Marcella is? Well, all of the the staff that they bought with them are missing by the time we get to Princess in the Tower. Right. That's his his when we get there we'll pay attention to, it, but there's no there's no mention of the I think she'd a scepter with her. Or she had some other like hand servants with her. His argument is that Oakheart kills himself because he doesn't want anyone to know where she's gone. And Oakheart no. in his chapter, Oakheart in his chapter, says thinks it several times that she he feels like a father to her. And remember, Robert wasn't much of a father to her. Mm. She's known Ares most of her life, right? Mm -hmm. A year to a kid is a long time anyway, and he's like the closest person to her. I don't think Preston didn't make this point, but I think a, a very strong, compelling piece of evidence for this theory. I don't think Oakheart would have allowed himself to be killed so brutally in front of Marcella because he loved her so much. He'd know. I mean, imagine the trauma of seeing that happen in front mm -hmm. of him mm -hmm. to like a girl that's like nine, nearly 10. Like that's going to be hugely traumatic for her. So I don't think he'd put her through that. The other girl he probably doesn't give a shit about. But well, she is in this context of this scene. She is described as being quite cautious. She's, you know, she's not she's not naive in this situation. She kind of figures out quite quickly what's going on, which would play into it being a slightly older girl than a ten year old. So the other thing mm. is, Geraldine attacks her. Now Geraldine. Mm -hmm. He's bitter because he's not one of the sort he's not in I, I don't think he's in the running for sword of the morning he doesn't no there's no there's no more. however the impression is that he's got he's pretty competent with a sword mm. right mm -hmm. now how does a competent swordsman only get to take off the ear and disfigure the face of a girl he should mm. be able to just very easily kill her mm. i think he knew what was happening and disfigured her on purpose so that that wouldn't be that swap wouldn't be allowed to happen again right that's my theory i've no i'm yeah. absolutely yeah. no yeah. yeah that wasn't from preston i'm so i don't yeah. want to blame him for that kind right. of crazy but i yeah. feel like if he watched a killer he would have been able to kill her mm. it seems mm. very like he he's disfiguring her that's what so do you doing. think it's all a setup then because it's very strange that that um it's a setup no for Ariel. yeah well, yes. i think i think there's a they i think i i think Oakheart is setting up ariane i don't know if dane and Oakheart are working together though i doubt it because they hate they, their families hate one another but um and also oh like it would be in the dane interest probably to take out the lannisters maybe well, it, but uh, unless know. unless doran was controlling all of this and he knew the because it just it just seems so strange that and even Ariane thinks this like how how did he how did he know how did I'm guessing uh, Dane told him I'm guessing he, Dane then, told him and he was allowed to escape because I cannot see how Dane got away with crossbowmen there mm. how he had time to disfigure this mm. girl yeah. and then get away I so think it was allowed Doran, to happen yeah. Duran maybe figured out that the, the girls were swapped or something happened. I mean, even like um, Ares in his chapter was thinking about like Duran wanted to bring Marcella to the water gardens. And like Ares is like, she won't be safe there. What are you talking about? Like, that's like, that's very so potentially popular. they could have done it. They could have crowned this young girl who isn't Marcella. And then so there, there you go. Think I don't know. I don't know if Ariane knew it wasn't her. Maybe she did, but the, Preston's argument is that mm. Air, that Oakheart, that they, that all of the people that went to Dorne, they never switched the girls back to keep Marcella safe, mm. so, and that the girl that has been Marcella in the eyes of the Martells mm. has never been Marcella. 
Mm -hmm. So um, that's his argument. I think it's quite compelling. I think, you know, Jamie and Cersei switched back and forth all the time. There's so could Marcella still be in King's Landing? No, 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 no. Marcella went to Dorne for sure. Because right. right. the two girls went to Dorne together. But oh, right. So yeah. wherever Marcella is, she's with, the, she's probably hiding somewhere in Dorne. And Dorne mm -hmm. is one of those places where you could hide for the rest of your life and no one will find yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, this is, I think this also lends to the younger, more beautiful queen coming back to take Cersei because if yeah. this is Marcella yeah. and she's now disfigured, that doesn't really help in my theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, yeah. interestingly, Ariane goes from calling her, or everybody goes from calling her queen, and Ariane emphasizes a number of times at the end of this chapter, Princess Marcella. It's like instantly she switches this is never going to happen. She's never going to be queen. Mm. But I don't know. I, I think Oakhart was alone. He was acting alone. He's the only one who knows where she is now. Mm. And he's mm. yeah. Whoever is with her, obviously they know where she is, but they're with her. So that's it. So mm. unless one of them rambles off and tells somebody, mm. who knows what's going to happen with the Marcella story. Interesting. Very interesting. I, I, if you haven't seen that video in a while, it's linked down below and it's mm. really good. Um, but I, I kind of buy it. I think it's, it's mm. possible. Either way, if, even if it isn't, and it is Marcella that Dane has disfigured, uh, that will also tie into the Lannister storyline because now we have Tyrion disfigured, we have Jaime disfigured, um, mm -hmm. potentially Cersei will be disfigured. I mm -hmm. mean, the cutting of her hair, all that kind of thing, is kind of a psychological disfigurement, mm -hmm. if you like, um, when she does the walk of shame. So it would tie into that kind of Lannister mm. losing their beauty before they lose their power kind of thing. So yeah. Vanity. So yeah. I think it, it works either way, but I kind of am leading in press, leaning in Preston's direction here. I don't think it's a, a tinfoil. I think there's a lot of evidence for it. That, that might be the thing. You and we were talking a couple of weeks ago about what is the thing that Cersei holds most dear. It could be that, just the gravitas of the family name. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that will be stripped from you. You just you know the Lannisters no longer command fear. They're a laughing stock. That yeah. would be the worst. I mean, oh my God, Tywin would be spinning in his grave if he thought the name, the Lannister name, just became something that was just laughed yeah. at. So, um, yeah. do you think do you think they'll we'll get to see Darkstar again, or will he be killed off camera? Uh, I hope we get to see him again. I think he's only he's going to be the only way in, possibly, unless you know somebody's revealed as a secret dame somewhere. He's possibly the only way in to us finding out a bit more about the Danes and and Would what's that going be on cool there. If like the prologue of of a Dream of Spring was Starfall, yeah, with yeah, that would be great. That would yeah. be so cool. Yeah. Um, I'm already <laughs> thinking of Dream of Spring. I need to dream of winter first. Um, was there anything else then in the Queen Maker? Yeah, just a couple of things from me. At the very beginning of the chapter, it's pointing out, and I, I suppose it's 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 obvious, um, but it's really really pointed out that in uh, this this fact that um, in Dawn, specific to their region, that there's nothing more important than water. It's a real commodity, you know, and it's a sign of wealth as well. So you've got like the water gardens, just very opulent, lots of, you know, free water and the pools and everything everywhere. But it's, um, you know, it's like, it's like gold. You, you it, it's, it's um, you know, it's a monetary commodity in Dawn. So I thought that was important. Yeah. And again, going, I always <laughs> immediately just go back to these elemental things about you know water and dawn and how dawn's history could link to you know what side that would fall on is water ice and that you know I, and my brain just goes off on a tangent but um <clears throat> i did think it was quite interesting that at the very end of the chapter aero hotar when arianne's quizzing like, how, how, how did this happen how did you know and he says you know, little princess, somebody always tells. 
and it's like so basically yeah that is that does mean that there is a spy in the camp or you know somebody doran always finds out or you know there's there's doran's was, all seeing eye it was a bit of a shit plan in yes yeah, it was it was i mean the thing i i can understand from her point of view she wants to see a, a female monarch. I mean, she even thinks favorably about, okay, well, if Cersei's the queen now, then that'll get her a bit more used to the fact that we want to crown a daughter. And, mm -hmm. you know, that will, I, I can kind of see what her agenda is and where she's coming from, but I don't know. I mean, it's one of my other questions is, will Westeros ever accept a female monarch? Well, I think if you, if when we get to the Cersei chapter, She's already distancing herself from Tommen quite a bit, and the relationship mm. is already breaking down. Um, I think had Ariane succeeded, I think Cersei may have named Marcella as heir, mm. or mm. maybe even as regent. Who knows? But um, or as queen. But I don't know. I mean, Cersei's mental, so it's probably going to sour people's. Um, yeah, it's probably going to sour them to female monarchs, unfortunately. Um, and and the only other thing i guess is you know again delving into history and maybe this question can be answered when with johnny when he does his um world of ice and fire reread is why did nymeria trek all the way to dawn and then burn the ships that that she took with her what was the what was the real reason that she did that um it really does in my mind tie the Dornish to the Targaryens and it does seem as though this is something that's still that whatever that history was is still quite prevalent in Doran's mind like today Nymeria so, is so fascinating as well mm, mm. very fascinating like it's um yeah Can't lots have... of just lots of like things like the, the Roynish like the old the old man of the Rhine and the turtle defeated by the Crab King. And again, we found out previously in Brienne's chapter that the crab, the cra the, the, the crack bones of crack claw point or whatever, if, that, if that's anything to do with them, if the Crab King, mm -hmm. you know, has the Crab King got anything to do with the Drowned God and the the, the, the Storm God and the, the river is described as the mother so there's lo there's lots of like intertwining symbolism and religious, um, and we, the, the context is just all over the place. Really, I can't. I like to be able to put things in boxes, and for me, it starts with this elemental thing. Like, how does that? Is it ice? Is it water? Is it the old gods? Is it that? And it it, it just all kind of it's this big, big melting pot in dawn, and I can't quite figure out. It's fascinating. And I, and I hope there will be a really interesting reveal too, because I think the reveal that we get in the books of what Doran is telling Ariane his plan is, is probably still not the real truth. No, I don't trust Doran at all. No. I think Doran let this play out. And it could be, it could be that Doran even knew what Oakheart was up to, if there is a swap there, if, Dor if, if Marcella is safe somewhere, it could be that Doran mm. knows that and let that happen to keep Marcella safe. That would make a lot of sense too, because mm. he might not like Doran is a man, a very patient man, and he may not want to play that move on his chess board yet. Mm. He may not want to play that piece. So it, who knows? I mean, the, the the biggest, most cryptic thing in this is Dark Star for sure. Um, but as I said, I don't think he was trying to kill her. I think he was trying to disfigure her. Um, because if uh, he if he is the one that mm. that that let Ariane's secret out of the bag, mm. then it would make sense why he's disfigured this girl. Yeah. In terms of what Dora Doran's plot might be, so that mm. later this can happen. Because has Doran even met Marcella at this stage? Has he met Marcella? I think he um, has. He has. Yeah. I yeah. Oh no, wait a minute. No, because they were at Sunspear, so he may not have. Maybe not, yeah, maybe not. Uh he's been at the water gardens. He's only recently mm. arrived at Sunspear, so he may not have even met Marcella. I wonder if I don't know, I'm really st stuck on this concept of water being really precious and important in Dawn, and it's like it, it, even more important than blood. And going back to that thing about <clears throat> 
about Doran does he, he doesn't seem to I don't know he, he doesn't seem to place as much importance on family than other you know if you compare the Martells to other other houses and especially Ariane thinks about Quentin quite a lot. She thinks about him all the time and makes those comparisons. See Quentin, you know, if I had that, you know, she's very, she, she's kind of comparable to Cersei in a way when she's thinking about, you know, if I, if I was, if only I was a boy and if I'd have been born first and all that kind of thing. She's got, she's got the same sort of ideas, but she talks about this thing about the Ironwoods and uh, a blood debt and Doran talking about Quentin being the coin. And it's like, he re you know, when you're talking about commodities, it really does feel as though Doran doesn't seem to place that much importance in his own family. But I don't know. I, well, he's, he's, I'm very curious about what his intentions and motivations are, because I think even what we think has been revealed in the books is is there's probably a lot more to it than that. So Ariane's plan hinges on the fact that she thinks Doran is much stronger than it actually is, and Doran's plans are all about keeping Doran as a whole safe, because mm. the Martells, the the family won't survive if Doran doesn't survive. Yeah, and and you're right about the water being precious. It makes me wonder: um, will there be a severe winter for these guys? I mean, mm. they talk about it getting a little bit chilly there now, but yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. As, not as chilly as it is everywhere else. Mm. So, um, I mean, I remember in Italy, like they had huge snowfall there recently, like it broke mm. all the records, and it just completely like the whole country came to a standstill um so it could if something like that happens in dorn will mm. they go underground will they survive it better than other parts of the world it might be ironic in a in a part of westeros where the population seems to be falling and mm. resources are at a, at a they seem to be dwindling because of the water supply it might yeah. be ironic if they're the strongest in the end mm. Um, mm. but yeah so uh, yeah, that was the Queen Maker, and then we moved yep. on to Aria Two. Oh, and wow. my question for you mm. is: Is this our last ever Aria chapter? Well, I I was this uh, to me this is the seminal Aria chapter. Yeah, it sets up so many things about where her character goes from this point onwards and though well, this is the beginning of uh, the beginning of her training but it's also the beginning of the loss of aria and the, the loss of the identity and the kind of slowly chipping away the many face god must have everything all of you every single part of you um i think that this possibly is the last time that we see true aria until we see her again at the end of the mercy chapter so do you think after the mercy chapter it'll go back to being aria mm. chapters right mm -hmm. okay yeah. mm -hmm. um i'm not entirely sure i'm not entirely convinced but mm. it's such you're right about this i mean the fact that she hides needle away i guess suggests that aria is going to come back for sure mm. um as aria but yeah, so I mean, this is the chapter where we get some of the history of the Faceless Men. Yes. Um, I, I'm not even sure where you want to start. I'm going to let you take over here because I know this is one well, of your favourites. Well, <clears throat> the, 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 the beginning of this chapter starts off with this concept of all men lie. So... True. All men, all men must die, all men lie. All men, what was the other one, Daharis? Must serve. All men must serve. True, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's the, the kindly man is talking about this idea that we tell ourselves, we tell lies that we then convince ourselves is a, a, a true. You know, you tell a lie so many times to convince other people that you begin to take on that you know it, it, it is it true isn't it true what was the real history of that 
but the kindly man is saying that a part of you always knows the truth even if you're telling a lie so much and so convincingly that a big part of you is also convinced by it there's always a small part of you that knows the truth and that's the crucial point of are you a faceless man or not a faceless man and i don't think aria ever will or was or became or will become a faceless man because of this because there's a very small part of aria that whatever happens to her here in this location in, in the house of black and white and serving the multi the 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 many multi-faced god the many-faced god is um she will there's always something that's going to be a part of her that knows the truth and knows that she's aria and that's what compelled her to not throw away needle um so the question in this chapter is who are you um and the an the answer has to be no one the answer always if the, if it's the correct answer and you're going in the right direction then the answer is has always got to be no one um so what is aria doing here that's my question is she here by accident did did events lead up to this just by chance no or is it or is it by design and if it's by design who who's behind this who's behind this so uh, is I it, what what do the faceless men want with aria stark so this this is my thing that blood raven managed to grab bran and bring him into the fold without mm. ever meeting him being aware of his birth anything like that necessarily yeah. like he, he so do the faceless men i mean they have shown themselves to be incredibly powerful maybe mm. the next most powerful magical religious entity after blood raven and the weirwood network i mean relore and that they seem to be powerful but I, I mean shadow babies bringing back to life i guess that's really powerful but the faces men just seem that bit more powerful mm. uh, they definitely have a they definitely have a large following and it feels like without even an, um, announcing or, or um, preaching, like Relore, like the followers of Relore need to go out in the streets and preach and bring people into the fold. But it feels like the faceless men, followers, people who are giving themselves over to the faces, the many faced God, they just show up and mm. curl up and die there. It's almost like they're they're willed there or they're they're sunk like the like your pipe piper analogy earlier on yeah, yeah. he is a little bit like that so it wouldn't surprise me if there's somebody i don't know if it's going to be green seeing as such but if there's somebody with an ability to feel out aria and maybe it's jack nagar maybe it was um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, cereal pharrell Maybe it was both of whom are, are mentioned in this chapter again. So strong kind of idea. Maybe it was Ned. I don't know. Like Ned is the one who kind, just, of, who kind of introduced her to this culture in a way through Serio. It just everything about it feels to me like... <laughs> could you, you, I mean, and you know, because I've, I've mentioned this to you uh, a few weeks ago about how I'm fascinated at the moment by listening to youtube videos and podcasts and things about cultish behaviors and why people end up joining controlled groups and cults and where you would think how you know you're an intelligent person how did you end up getting involved in something like that did so you like, watch you watched the one i, I did watch yeah. wild wild west i loved it yeah. um but just like listening to a lot of like ex cult members who are actually quite intelligent people, but explaining about the the psychology and also I mean, it tend, tends to be a lot of people have a certain phase in their life where it's like I need to find meaning, I need to you know, and whether it's a religion or or whatever, um, people go down this particular road. But here, but there's but there's always that you know, there's a leader, there's followers, and there's some sort of control mechanism and there's usually a doom and gloom you know apocalyptic if you don't do this this will happen 
which is the control device. But here, the kindly man keeps telling the kindly man keeps telling her, no, this isn't for you. You shouldn't be here. In fact, you can leave at any time you like. No, I don't know who Jack and Agar is. You've got. I, I do, there's the door. If you want to leave, and this isn't for you, off you go. And you can just imagine if at any point she said, uh, you know what? Yeah, this isn't. I'm not feeling it, guys. I, I'm going to go head back to the docks and see if I can get a boat back to Westeros. Mm -hmm. All the locks would go, and they'd be like, she'd be. You know, she. It would be. A controlled environment and it's like no you're here now it's taken us such a long time to get you here we know what you're capable of we need but it's so so i suppose my question is if the faceless men have brought her there by design why what is it that they need what is it that she's bringing that they need that they can't get from anywhere else or they can't so there's this because I think in the Mercy chapter, when she leaves, it's not going to be because they're like, in the TV show, it was shit because it was very confused. You know, they were there in the Hall of Faces and she was oh, like, was I'm Arya Stark. Gorgeous. And he's like, good on you. You know, hope everything goes well. And it's like, I that. don't see, I don't see how she evolved. <laughs> I don't see mm. how that allowed that. I mean, there's so many things even in this chapter that like, Arya will be able to blend in as a cook anywhere. Like yeah. there's so many things that she's learning, you know, They're, they have her working everywhere. She's going to be mm. a jack of all trades or a Jane of all trades mm. when she gets back. So she'll be able to blend in anywhere. Um, mm. But we don't see her do that in the show. No. So it kind of, it's a bit confusing. Um, I, I've said this to you before and I know certain people disagree with me. I was watching oh god i can't remember he does the travel series of westeros oh in deep geek robert in deep geek sorry yeah. robert um yeah. yeah he he was saying that he he was talking about bran being the strongest warg mm. i actually don't agree with that i think it's i think bran might be the i've said this before i think john is the strongest and potentially aria mm. um, is, is is the next strongest um well i would just i mean wolves seem like a female magical creature you know there's i don't know wolves moon moon blood howling at the moon it just seems to have more of a visceral feminine kind of so, i would it wouldn't surprise me if I, especially because lady isn't around anymore maybe that even you know if you lose one of your senses it kind of exaggerates another one of your senses this is the thing i mean one in 1,000 people are wargs, is that right? And mm. one in 1,000 wargs are green seers. That yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that the one in 1,000 warg who is a green seer is like the strongest warg ever. It just means yeah. they, they have green sight. It doesn't like it doesn't necessarily mean that they're like yeah. a stronger warg because of their green sight, mm. right? Mm. So um, I wonder because we don't have scientific data to back this up, of the amount, I wonder, is there a um, a sex or a gender disparity there? Does mm. it matter? Is it is there, we've, we've seen more men, more males in the books be wargs than females. Like yeah. Arya is our only female warg right now, right? Mm. That mm. we know of. So mm. um, is that even rarer? And she seems to be able to do it across continents I, I, we haven't seen brandy that no. yes yes no. that's no. not to say he won't be mm -hmm. um and when i say warging i mean that just going into or their wolves, the wolves. Mm. i i he he's probably and surpasses them on skin changing but just the connection with the wolves i just feel like bran might sacrifice summer if something better comes along so there may have been even some kind of prophecy from the from the faceless men you know one day a baby girl will be born who is so powerful that she's a, as powerful as a warg that she'll be able to kind of transform something maybe that's missing from an element of how the faceless men have developed i mean it's it's interesting that we get the history of the the, the it, i find this chapter fascinating i could do a whole like a couple of hours just on this chapter the the first faceless man and again in my mind i'm thinking first faceless man first men first man 
first men yeah. but so it's it's and the fact that he kind of alludes to well we don't know we, nobody knows who he you know he could have been this he could have been that sounds very much like old nan talking about azora high could have been this could have my been... theory about yeah. old she i think she yeah. i just have this feeling since the last aria chapter i really feel there's going to be an opportunity for her to take nan's face old nan's face mm. i think that's how she's going to get back into winterfell on scene <laughs> oh that would be interesting yeah because old nan is still alive uh that she's told that a false smile and a true smile can look alike so she is craving i mean she's curious and she's at that age as well and she's a tomboy and she so this is all feeling very exciting i guess for aria um despite the fact that i mean she's been through a rougher time in terms of her living conditions compared to where she is now you know she's get she's getting fed at least oh yeah um, and she's, you know, she even makes those comparisons about, oh, if I was still at Harren Hall, I'd be getting beaten now if I did this or I did that, you know. So she's the the the, the environment she's in is more conducive to and where Aria is in a, in a life. But she she wants to learn, and she's saying, you know, teach me, teach me. It's this perfect storm going on there, I think. Well, and more than that in the same way as John and Bran have since almost the beginning of the series, definitely since the end of A Game of Thrones, she has been given a purpose where she never had purpose ever in her life. Mm. She was told you have to be a lady and there wasn't another option for her. So yeah. here they are offering her a purpose. It is interesting. I am interested in seeing is there a relationship between the fact that she's a girl and whatever they want her for because he brings it up about how so few faceless men are women mm. and how the fact that she may want children in the future might change that but she seems to suggest that that doesn't even that doesn't register with her at all and I feel like I don't know I, I I can't imagine Arya as a mother I know she's only what eight now at this stage or nine but you yeah. can't really see that in her future at all right maybe as Nymeria but I'm not okay. sure as an Arya it, oh I, I I just think is she it, it seems as though she's embarking on her faceless men training you know she's been set or sent on missions and um <clears throat> they, 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 they're sort of giving us certain things like you will be blind you will be deaf you have to there are all these tests that you have to go through so i think she's not just being trained up as a as a as a faceless man that she, they're not that she thinks she's going through the test that this is what it takes to be a faceless man and this is the course that i'm on at the moment you know i think in in future chapters she kind of reconciles it in her own mind of like well what have my father's gods ever done for me i may as well pledge everything to you know this god where i am at the moment i mean i'm not, I'm not sure whether she should be kind of you know whether or not she becomes that religious and devout in terms of you know i i am here to serve the the the, the many-faced god because essentially what we're being told here is that the the, the faceless men are the many faced gods like servants yeah. amongst us you know and they are the ones that will i mean they do it, it, to all intents and purposes this sounds like a murder cult that's what it sounds like um some sort of death squad that you can hire you know even i think later on uh little finger thinks about or it would have been, you know, it would have been easier and cheaper to get a faceless man to do X, X, Y, Z. So, but they exist, going back to what you said about the origins of the faceless men, to release pain and suffering. Yeah. But that's not what Aria is about. When it comes so, to killing people, it's about her prayer, her list is her prayer that's her religion Absolutely. that's what she's hanging yeah. on to and her faith in that in that list and her religion and her mantra 
is not about, she's not interested in releasing Circe from pain and suffering and releasing the mountain from pain and suffering. She wants vengeance. No, and I mean, they she must wants know that. that. They she must know that. Well. So I think they're putting her through a series of tests that she thinks is faceless men training, but they're trying to identify how obedient can she be? What will she how will and she's not clearly as the story progresses it becomes more and more obvious that she's not going to be obedient to them no. so who knows i mean maybe they'll will will they chase after her will she always have some so, you know here's the thing you mentioned their little finger saying it would have been easier to hire them and mm. you're on resorted we we assume or there's a lot of theories that you're on resorted to hiring a faceless man i kind of probably think he did that himself. but Balon, yeah maybe but um there must be a reason why more people don't hire the faceless men do you are you ever out of it, that debt that you owe them is there something about once you use them you're kind of tied to them is there something well, you, about you, that? Yeah, yes, there is. There is because you have to. Are you then like? Aren't you supposed to give the money face yeah, God? Yeah. When you pay that debt, aren't you supposed to give something? You, isn't it supposed to? Oh God, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's it's not just a monetary thing. No, it can't it's be because something that's important to you. Yeah, you have to give something up that's important and to you. In the next chapter, we realise actually Littlefinger is really superstitious. He he mm. really does buy into the curse of Harrenhal. So mm -hmm. he's not mm. going to use the faces men. No, if he's if he has such close ties to Bravosi, he'd know that mm. that he'd know about that cult. Um, I mean, I used to think it. I used to think at one point that. Again, this question of why do the faceless men want Arya? Why her in particular? Why this? Because it does seem as though this is all by design. Mm -hmm. um, that maybe Arya is the many-faced god. Maybe she is a god. And well, she could be a prophesized like... god because she will have many faces for sure, mm. and already yeah. has. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. any training, and she's not even like. 12 yeah or whatever you know she's what if they got it wrong mm. what if they should have got bran what if they what if it's actually mm -hmm. bran that they meant to take or what if their prophecy is actually referring to bran and not aria mm. maybe because it can't be just blood raven and the children that have felt the power bran's power mm. in the world right mm. it yeah. has to like if there's other magical forces it has to be I mean, we, we talk a lot about, oh, magic came alive again when the dragons were born. But mm. maybe it was when Bran was reborn. Maybe it wasn't the dragons. Maybe maybe <laughs> they felt out this, like, strong Stark and, you know, Sirio and Jack and Metter and they, I don't know, maybe they, they managed to think, oh, it's this one, it's definitely this one. Well, there are some theories as well that the Faceless Men are linked to the old gods. Mm -hmm. And that the many face god is just uh, a, another a, another feature of the old gods, and and I think it's it's um, order of the green hand that I have a theory that in the like we hear in this chapter that you know there's this suspicion about the the lowest level is the holy sanctum, so deep 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 down, like again underground underneath, not high up in some you know it's all it's down there somewhere and these bodies are being kind of cleaned and taken off to this to, to this holy sanctum and their theory is that there's a weirwood a massive giant like you know the weirwood um tree that's down in the lower sanctum and that what they're doing is taking the bodies down there and just sacrificing them right. to the tree to, to the old gods um, and that this entire religion is just like a front, you know, it's like the um, Sweeney Todd, where, you know, people come in the front yeah. way, but it's like other stuff's going on down here underneath, and it's well, a lot more. Well, it would more. kind of make sense, like the fingers of mm. Westeros are almost reaching out to Bravasi for their yes. old religion. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should have said hello to Meridian, how are you? Uh, yes, George R. R. Martin confirmed at Worldcon that... Um, mm. 
Blood Raven has Dark Sister. Uh, mm -hmm. And you, Meridian, thinks that Arya will end up with Dark Sister. And Claire, mm -hmm. you think it might be Mira or it could mm -hmm. be Mira. I kind of think it might be Mira as well. Um, Meridian says Dark Sister matches Arya. It does. But depending on what Mira and Jojen are going through, Mira could be a damn Dark Sister. Arya's got such uh, her her whole character and story arc is so closely linked to Needle. Absolutely. That I can't, I can't, I can see why people, you know, Dark Sister, obviously that's Arya. She's the lone wolf. She's the black sheep of the family. But whatever. she's a loyal she, sister. She's not dark yeah. as a sister. No, no. Yeah. If anything, it's, it's her, her, her sisterly identity that is keeping mm -hmm. her somewhat in, in the light. Um, and I'm Mira, glad that Mira uh, could be very, very pissed off with Jojen and her dad when she yeah. leaves. Like yeah. if she's been put in a situation where she could end up being killed or whatever, yeah. And yeah. she could come out there looking for. She could be coming out there looking for. Well, it, 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 if there's any any kind of reflection of what happened in the, t I was so pissed off with that where Bram was just like, "See ya." And she, yeah, I've, 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 oh, just, I've used you as much as I need to, just, don't. you know, yeah. And also, <laughs> they kind of, like, they didn't really mention Dark Sister in the show, but they kind of mm. gave a lot of attention to the sword when she was leaving and stuff, just to kind of, like, oh, yeah, yeah, we know, we know a little bit about what's going on, but yeah, yeah. I know, and I love that actress, Mira, so. Um, but anyway, the, the, the big question I have for you here with the history of the Faceless Men he kind of stops short of saying what they did to the masters. So do you yeah. think the faceless men, I mean, this is a common fan theory, the faceless men are connected with the doom? Uh, yes. I, I think they possibly even caused it. Yeah. Um, to destroy Valeria, uh, the 14 flames and the slaves and just the horror. And again, if you're going to release somebody for all of those people from pain and suffering and why not just blow the whole place up so whatever the faces men are doing it might be dependent on how winter will spread mm. will it just come from north to south through westeros will westeros be like have to keep it from esos from crossing the sea mm. or is it also because we don't know is it also going to go north and east like is the, is esos and westeros connected Free, freeze over the narrow sea and the dothraki yeah. so, across the ice because we've the house of the undying references to weirwoods we've got the faces men references to weirwoods i mean mm. is is like will they try and are they trying to launch their own attack against these others are they even aware of the others that are mm. coming mm. i mean it's is this what they're hoping to do to actually use this fire ice or they're sorry this volcan volcanic magic again to maybe i don't know it's it, yeah the other thing i want to ask is um he she comes up with a couple of names that she could use um down at the canals and he finally lets her use the name cat mm. uh <laughs> is using her mother's name the best way to stay anonymous cat of the canals lady cat dragged out of the red fork or where yeah. there's too many parallels there cat and of the he canals. knows that so it's yeah. almost like he's allowing her to retain some of her mm. identity like you're just yeah just yeah. just in case you get carried away with your new training and being a novice and all this new exciting stuff yeah here's something to remind you of who you really are also we're not going to double check that you've definitely thrown away everything like i mean if he really wanted her to destroy her whole identity he would say give me everything now he does seem to because that was one of my questions as i was writing down in the notes as i was listening to the chapter does the kindly man know that she's hidden needle he does she seems to think that he knows that she's got rid of all of her belongings but not specifically needle so i think I think she think I think she just thinks he's guessed that. He's, they do seem to know. I mean, I think she is being watched, like everything that yeah. she does, she's being watched. But I don't know. If I was him, that'd needle at me. 
the big thing here in this oh, chapter okay. is my joke. Oh, sorry, I just I was I was off on a tangent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I did a stupid point on the screen. <laughs> I said if I was him, that would needle at me. <laughs> It wasn't oh, right. It oh, wasn't right. It can't, honestly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, that could be the thing that needles them in the end. You never know, you never know. Oh, but the, 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 to me, this entire chapter is summed up with, we are told in this chapter that for you to be a servant of the many-faced God and to be really be a faceless man, you have to have zero pride zero pride nothing of yourself nothing of your own ego and and um, and we also know from this chapter and if we don't we're reminded by what she does with her belongings that aria always has pride she has pride in who she is where she's from who her family are john everything i mean the yeah I mean, you know, the, she the, has the, pride the, in who, where she's from, for sure. But mm. um, this is also the girl that ate worms to survive. So I wonder, is it a, is it a selfish thing that she does? Her ego, is it... Is it I, I feel like Aria often, her identity is about her family, not necessarily mm. about who she is. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's mm. not like she's in this for self-development. Yeah. She's, the survival for her is survival is stark survival yeah that's why she's so broken she's not being allowed to develop as a person mm. so maybe that's enough maybe that's all they need and um, meridian says valor Magalis, the uh, others are stopping people from really dying yeah that's true mm. they are an enemy of the faces men yeah yeah i um the only other thing really to mention from this chapter is um <laughs> it is sorry you mentioned before about the green seer and that the number of thousand the the a thousand one in a thousand is a warg and one in a thousand wargs is a green seer it's very casually mentioned again a thousand in this chapter because Ari, in the context of Arya feeling as though it was a thousand years, it feels like a thousand years ago since the last time she was in King's Landings, she's thinking about her backstory and her new identity as, as Cat of the Canals. Shall, you know, should I say I'm from King's Landing? I, there's, a, there's a code there. I am convinced that, I think that, that right. that's the yeah. code. And I think I'm going to pay particular attention to whether or not that number a thousand is also associated in the same chapter with something to do with warging. Right. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's um, there's this funny thing here as well that well, there's another there's another theory about the waif. You know what. How, I mean, he says it's because of all the poisons that she takes, which sounds weird anyway, mm -hmm. that stunts are aging. And Aria's like, oh, is that what I'm going to be like as I get older? Am I going to look like a, a, a young girl? Um, so we've got here a young girl who looks like she's a teenager, a child, um, but actually she's 36. Yeah, it's really weird. I'm 36. Do I look like a child? <laughs> the, the <laughs> um, are you from where is it where um masande is from, um, is she from she's from the place where all the butterflies not novos uh she's from a place isn't she where the they've got poisonous butterflies it's beautiful but like you can't stay there for long you'd die um and also the fact that she's quite good at picking up languages and things like that. So, like, is there's a possibly a connection there between the waif and the sandy? Nah, Lo is what they're saying. Nah, hey, Barbara, thank you, you thank you very much. Yes, um, yeah. I'm from Kilkenny. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it's interesting as well that we get a touch of that. Arya thinking a little bit about her looks and her her femininity and. Mm. The, the kindly man kind of 
referencing her womanhood kind of for the first time really mm. uh, which is all well, I mean when we get into the mercy chapter we'll suddenly be like oh whoa yeah. Harry is now a little lady uh, yeah. kind of um, it's interesting coming off the Ariane chapter as well because we'll because Ariane was quite an unattractive girl and she grew up to be a beauty and mm. she she prayed and prayed and prayed for that mm. Arya doesn't pray for that but she did think for for all through game of thrones and clash you know mm. Arya horse face you know she mm. did, it does mm. play on her and you wonder is a lot of this bravado linked to the fact that she never thought she would be a beauty mm. and a bit like Brienne a little bit yeah so mm. it, and you know potentially as beautiful if not more beautiful than Sansa not that that's an important thing but it might change how Arya sees herself or what she's capable of doing look how Ariane uses it with mm. Harry, for instance. Mm. um yeah so is there anything else I mean there's probably a lot with Arya too but is there anything just the, the they require her obedience she's not obedient and they're putting through her through a series of tests which she thinks is faceless men training to see whether or not they can control her. Will she be obedient? Will she be, you know, they open the door and she just doesn't want to go. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, she's in, she's in there. So I, I don't know. I mean, the, the other thing as well, again, right at the beginning of this chapter is the, uh, the kindly man describes the many faced God as giving every, so everyone who's born according to this religion, according to the many faced God, every single being that's born is given a dark angel. Yeah. And that just made me think of the stranger. Mm -hmm. um, so again, that's that like crossover between faith and magic and different faiths and different, you know, different religions and different magical kind of uh, elements. But anyway, yeah, I don't know if, to me, Dark Angel is stranger. Yeah, that definitely sounds like it. And not the Buffy, the teenage yeah. Buffy the Vampire Slayer spin-off. So could Arya be, maybe they think that she is the stranger and all the... I think, yeah, yeah. there's every yeah. chance that this is a case of mistaken identity. Mm -hmm. That the, mm -hmm. the Manny Face God, I mean, Bran will be the ultimate Manny Face God, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's every chance that they've, they've, they've there's been a bit of a mess. Back the wrong horse. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. Uh, okay. So then we have our first Elaine chapter. Yeah. Uh, and this is Elaine one. So mm -hmm. uh, Littlefinger, I don't, I don't have a huge amount here to be fair. Um, they're basically under siege at the Erie. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a bit confused about Robert and these fits. It seems as if Littlefinger yeah. is controlling them. Really does. Mm. And the maester seems to be like completely aware of this. I really do think Littlefinger has some sort of gift. There's something well, he, not right here. He's getting much more assertive, isn't he, about what to do with it. I'm in charge here, sort him out. <laughs> you know, this is what he's saying to the maester. Um, he's like dictating that he has to have sweet wine and just a pinch, just a pinch. That's dangerous stuff that could just put him into a coma and then that's the end of sweet robbing. Yep. So they're, they're playing a very dangerous game here to get him to kind of behave in front of the, you know, a dangerous game. Um, My, but he's hearing, he's still hearing voices, he still yeah. hears Marillion and he still hears, I think there so is something Sansa about... So right? Sansa hears Marillion as well, I think. Does she? I don't I mean, think so, not after he oh, died. it's just Robert, it's just Robert. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. I just remember I think he is, I think there is something about when he gets himself into those states, whether it's induced or not, that, that that's an easier way for him to be some sort of conduit for another, you know, like Blood Raven to get to, to kind of channel through or to watch what's going on or whatever, because the the hearing voices, I, I mean, it might be saying that you can still hear Marillion, but maybe, maybe it isn't Marillion, maybe it's somebody I mean, else whispering in his ear exactly think aries going mad losing mm. his mind mm -hmm. I mean, this is for me it, like somebody like Littlefinger growing up how would you learn how to gain power quickly think of Oberyn martell 
he went mm. around he trained with the um the citadel he he went up to esos i mean i wouldn't be surprised if we find out that little finger did similar things who knows maybe little finger managed to get somebody from the faceless men to spill some secrets or maybe mm -hmm. he maybe i don't i'm surprised little finger didn't end up going to the citadel for a while um but i definitely think if i totally believe that little finger is is sweet robin's dad mm. um, i definitely think for just the he even he even says my son yes in does. this chapter yes yeah. yeah and for little finger to know as much as he does i mean ravens aren't that fast mm. i just feel like he has some sort of i don't know if it's green sight as such maybe it's not that strong but there's mm. definitely something going on with Littlefinger that it's there's I it, there's something not quite right about it. I um I mean I don't know if it's an inherited thing. Same, yeah, yeah. If, if it is an inherited gift, if you know if your father's a green seer, that you're likely to also inherit some of that ability. I mean I wouldn't have thought so if it's only a thousand in a thousand. But yeah. we only have one. We only mm. have two. And there are more than 2,000 people in Westeros. Mm -hmm. So we have to have some more. There have to, they have to be some more. Yeah, yeah. So there's every chance. Mm. I mean, there seems to be a strong chance that there are a lot of Stark wargs, for instance, um, and skin changers among the wildlings. So well, I mean, it's not... funny because a thousand. If we're, if I'm going on the, I'm going to continue on this hypothesis until it's disproved. Even to when you're like yeah. when you're in your seventies, just rocking in a wheelchair yeah. in a nurse. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand. <laughs> a th uh, it's mentioned that each of the lords declarant have a thousand men each at the foot of the mountain. You know, like watch what you do in Littlefinger because there's an army down here That's and there's you know, it is each of them so there's eight of them there's a fair eight thousand but it's the, rather than saying we've got eight thousand men they made a, the point in the text of saying each of them has a thousand it's you know there we go again the thousand is this to indicate that within this chapter there's something to do with warging or somebody who can walk well i mean you know let's not forget that picel said in the last cersei chapter a war in the Vale would be most tragic. There's something, there's something strange about the Vale. And um, Barbara said, mm -hmm. Littlefinger definitely learned to be devious from Hoster Tully. Thank you for bringing up Hoster mm -hmm. Tully because mm -hmm. I want to go back to our favorite topic from Clash and yeah. Storm, the the Westerosi Illuminati, mm -hmm. uh, Royce. Let's talk about Royce. Yeah. Sansa says to Littlefinger, she's very worried about these guys coming up. Mm. For he's, he's he's called all these lords up and she says whoa uh royce is going to recognize me i met him when way waymar royce was going to the night's watch mm. first of all who gets their daddy to hold their hand all the way to the wall mm. second of all why did they go to winterfell i know you could stop off there if you wanted to but there seems they're not. To be, it's, they're not their liege lord, no, are they? No, yeah, no. Yeah, um, and yeah. and it just seems a bit fishy. I mean, I, the reason mm -hmm. I'm saying Hoster Tully, I still, I know a lot of people. Whenever I ask this question, why is Waymar Waymar Royce in at the wall? A lot of people say, oh, it's traditional for a younger mm -hmm. son. Not really. Not really anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. Not not a highborn son. Not, that's why the Night's Watch is in such peril. People yeah. aren't sending their kids to the wall. They certainly are, are not holding their hands mm. and bringing them to the wall. So there's something not quite right about the Royces. I feel like they're, the Royces are way more powerful. They're kind of like um, the the high towers in the story. You know, they're, they're kind of always around. There's always something. Can you imagine there. if, I mean, really thinking about Waymar Royce for a second, <laughs> the two people that Sansa's had this kind of, uh, you know, John Quill and the bear kind of crushes on um, have been, you know, in this idea of the perfect night have been Joffrey <laughs> yeah. and Waymar Royce. Both and of Loris them. a little bit as well. Loris a little bit, yeah. Loris, yeah. Well, certainly 
Waymar and Joffrey came to some came to a sticky end. But can you imagine if that would have been that kind of sliding doors alternate reality of Sansa Stark being betrothed to and marrying a Royce instead yeah. of you know instead of what and happened? All leads back to the veil. That would have been a very, very strong mm -hmm. alliance. That would very have been something strong. that would have been in Hoster's favour. Yes, 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 marry your daughter. Well, why, to... why then is, why are the Royces throwing away a son, basically, an heir? Like, why are they throwing away the opportunity for such a strong alliance? Mm -hmm. There, there's something, and I still think this, this may go back to maybe, to maybe he Eamon. took him up there. Maybe he took him up there to try and seal an alliance with Ned about marrying Sansa to Waymar. Ned said no because she was so young. Yeah, because that was about and... it's about eight or maybe maybe a year before the events of the. Like the events at Winterfell mm -hmm. start, is that right? Because mm. we're, t I think, in Game of how... Thrones, he's six months there. Mm. Waymar, I think he's mm. only about six months, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's that's about three months before. Is it that long? No, that can't be right. That's about a month before Ned mm. behaves your man. If it takes yeah. about a month, is that, yeah. that sounds a bit long. Maybe it's less. Well, sorry, he's six months, so it would yeah, so it would take him the guts of a month to get from beyond the wall to Winterfell. Mm. Would it would it take that long? Maybe not. I don't know what you're talking about, Kat. You've sorry. Gone off, you've gone off on a timeline thing that's sorry, just made sorry, me go. Sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. I, I the guy think... the guy that Ned beheads at the beginning of a Game of Thrones. Yes. I can't remember his name. Anyway, oh yeah, yeah. He's he is with Waymar Rice when they're killed. Yes. Beyond the wall, right? Yeah. And so that's the Waymar Rice has been six months in the Night's Watch when they're killed. Yes. So how long would it take to get from where they were beyond the wall down to Winterfell? About a month, right? Because he would have had to get mm -hmm. through the wall first of all. Mm -hmm. That guy. But so so it's only so Sansa potentially met him less than a year before yes. so before like she while she's at winterfell and joffrey and all that kind of thing before happened. she was betrothed to joffrey yes yeah, that's my yeah. point mm, yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> um, but she she's so she's she has a valid point that royce will recognize her she yeah, won't have changed yeah. that much in yeah. two three years at that age but i don't know would the alternative have been marry sansa i'll put my son on the wall um I think it could have been that, the, uh, uh, oh. I mean, if you go back even further, if Hoster had designs on the north and to expand his power base, what better way to do it than send one of your daughters to marry whatever Stark, Brandon, oh, he's not around anymore, marry Ned, yeah. just marry that effing family, get in, get yourself in there produce children, family duty on her, family duty on her, and for your daughter, so you're a Tully, we've placed you in the north, you've had children with the northern name and the northern connection, but you're still a Tully, and what we're going to do is bring another Tully element or another Riverlands element into it. No, it's, they're not Riverlands, forget what I've just said, it's not Riverlands. I know, it's, it's so confusing, it's, and I went on a, a timeline there as well, because my point was that Sansa isn't she wasn't that young that she couldn't have been betrothed either so like it's only mm. it's only eight or nine months before she's actually handed over to Joffrey effectively so it's not yeah, like she would yeah, that. yeah. but there's something there mm. this isn't the first time there's been a northern Vale Riverlands triangle yeah right? yeah so the first people to suffer from winter are the eerie they're the first ones that are going to have to move because they're so hot. I mean, it, it could have been an, a John Aaron and Hoster Tully this, yes, plan. This yeah. is my thing. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. who best to deliver any kind of secret messages or just to be on a reconnaissance mission either mm. in Winterfell mm. or at the Wall with the Royces because they're everywhere and nobody really pays attention to them. 
Yeah. And they are everywhere. They have so many offspring. They're all over the place. And Barbara says yeah. Ned wouldn't throw Sansa to third son. I think you're no, right. so he would he would have rejected the notion of it but if it was ever broached. But... To go there. Yeah, yeah, I and, and, and I think that Bronze Jon, Bronze Jon, Bronze Jon, and possibly all of the other Lords of the Declarant know precisely who Elaine is. And it kind of, the reason that I think this is twofold, really. One is she's so convinced that he would know her when she's getting ready and she's thinking, oh, and she's like, oh, no, I really do look very different. Um, I mean, in my notes, I've said it's so much easier to use disguise and that whole thing again about, you know, you don't have her, unless you've got a photographic memory, it's going to be really difficult for you to, especially because she's grown up and, you know, she's filling out a bit and she's she's starting to um, become a woman. So maybe she does look very different from the child a year, a couple of years ago. But I think he does know her. And I think also Lady, whatever she's called, I didn't get, get a note of a name listening to the audio, but uh, the, the woman who's there, the lady that's part of the Lord's Declarant. Oh, right. Okay. Wynn? She... Is it Wynn? No. I can't remember. I can't remember, but she, yeah. the one who I think isn't she, sort of uh, uh, Harry, Harry the heir is her ward. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. But she, she kind of comes to Sansa's defense when Sansa's in a bit of a prickly situation and she's being asked a lot of questions. She pipes up and says, "Oh, just stop it, stop it!" You know, she's she's bit, she's bit, the words are she's been through enough horror, and I'm like. That makes it sound as though you know that that's Sansa and what and what Sansa's been through. I mean, you could look at this, couldn't you, and say, oh, no, 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 Claire, what she means is, oh, that must have been horrible, being part of that whole incident where L L Lysa goes through the moon door. I mean, but that wasn't the public story, was it? No, Elaine had nothing also, to do with that. I mean, let's let's face it, most people are going to think like Catelyn Stark. This mm. bastard girl, I don't give a shit what yeah. she feels, what she thinks. So why would somebody step into her defense? She's been through I, so I, much horror already. Back off, leave her alone. That makes it sound like they all know. No, that and I think, I mean, the Harry the Air thing in it, in of itself, it's not like, I think they know they'll get more than the veil out of it. Mm. If, um, but it, it's interesting the hair color thing because I'm I'm auburn, but in this light it looks probably brown. It doesn't really change my my face, right? I think people can still recognize. Can, it. Yeah, but you can see the red in your hair. You can always whatever the yeah. light is, you can see the red in your hair. Yeah. But I mean, the thing this it, there's kind of a common thread here between the Queen Maker, the Aria, and the Sansa chapter. If it was just a matter of changing the color of your hair, this faceless men would just be the wigless or the wigged men mm. <laughs> like the, yeah. it, 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 it's mm. kind of like Clark Kent's glasses that's what I was going to say yeah yeah I yeah. mean this You're is why anyone. this anyone. kind of lends credence to the fact that Mar mm. the Marcella we see isn't really Marcella because changing her hair color wouldn't really keep her safe mm -hmm. and I think it's similar here to Sansa and maybe Littlefinger is counting on them recognizing them Mm. he's counting on them knowing that this isn't going to be a disguise that'll keep them i mean she's very striking looking sansa mm -hmm. uh there's there's absolutely no way that royce wouldn't i mean you'd be paying attention to let's let's like say how many like major houses are there in westeros and how mm -hmm. many would royce come in contact with mm -hmm. you'd be paying attention to the eldest daughter mm. of the Stark household. Mm, yeah. yeah, anybody would. Yeah, it, it, just because she's a girl doesn't matter. Yeah. They'll no, you marry marrying into. into you, yeah, yeah. Who yeah. who are they going to look at straight away? As soon as they walk in, they're going to want to see Rob. They're going to want to see Sansa, and they might want to see John out of curiosity because of Ned, like mm. Ned, the Honorable Ned had a bastard. What's this all about? But mm. they're the two that people are going to be like, oh well, they're the two, the male and the female. I mean, it's. Like, look at Marjorie, Marjorie Tyrell. Everybody knows who she is. Of mm. course, people mm. are going to remember Sansa. So, 
Um, it's just the context into which they met her is the thing that is a red flag for me. And I wonder, are they counting on it not being a red flag for somebody like Littlefinger? Like, like would Littlefinger even think, why did Royce send his son to the wall? Why did he stop in on Winterfell first? And how come mm. Royce got so far beyond the wall so quickly? Way more Royce. Mm. How come he's suddenly a ranger straight away? Like, you mean, he, he, that's the big question at the beginning. There's something the really dodgy about all of this Roy really stuff. Dodgy, I mean, their really ancient, ancient house is mentioned that probably one of the most ancient, weren't they really quite... Um, really, really old. They were key players way back with the first men versus the... What was the other? The Andals? Yes, the first men in the Andals. There was there was all of that going on at the time where awesome. the Royces were the big key players for the first men. Also, we don't get that many throwbacks to secondary characters in the same way as we do with Waymar Royce. You know, like a, like a lot of characters that just die. Do you think something's just occurred to me? Do you think that rather than the Great Northern Conspiracy, that this is the the ancient First Men Conspiracy? Ooh. And they're trying to mobilise back to that race of people that where they all originally came from. They're all, you know, the families that are First Men, because you've got the Royces were, were important, were key players mm -hmm. back then. So were the Starks. Yeah. And it, a lot of a lot of characters have said i'm trying to remember which ones but how how proud that like well nimble dick recently yes. how proud they were to be um first men i need to go mm. and listen to the history of westeros have a whole thing oh bye meridian thank you for coming um the the history of West, Restaurants have a whole episode on the Royce family. I need to go and listen oh, to it. Again. Good luck, Davos. Run free. Yeah, Davos the Leopard. Stay away from Skagos. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the, the only other thing that kind of stuck out to me here was, I mean, I mentioned it already, Harrenhal, the Harrenhal curse and removing Cersei from the game and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Elaine... Uh, sees little fingers plan and sees his manipulation straight away um and sir lynn the pedophile what's that all about i've got in incoming mini theory i think that just looking into my crystal oracle ball um that the fact that sansa slash elaine figured this out and she really you know she was really she sleepless night trying to figure this all out trying to work out and she does and she goes to Littlefinger to get confirmation that she's right and he reveals that lynn corbray as long as you know what a man is interested in and that's three things it's gold boys and killing so i'm just going to skip over the gold and the boys bit for a second and focus on the killing this is what motivates this guy so first part of that is you immediately think what has Littlefinger promised him about kill who's he going to be what is it a royce is he going to promise him that you can wipe out the the root and branch you can get rid of the, that competition well probably if he did he probably didn't mean that because that would create a massive power imbalance for for peter in that location but what i think it really means is that little uh, that sansa has figured this out she knows what what little fingers plan was she saw it and she's figured out that this is something to do with lynn corbray and i think that she's clever enough to be able to use those three things he should never have revealed that to sansa this is what he's all about this is what motivates him gold boys and killing because he's told her that she's now gonna i think that the da -da 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 mini theory is 
that Sansa ultimately will kill Littlefinger, not through the moon door, but by twisting his plans back in, on him and that she will manipulate Corbray eventually into killing him. Yeah, wow. into killing Littlefinger. So watch out for that one, well, possibly. And yeah. just to go back to one of those things, the gold and the boys, mm. she won't have access to gold, but she may have access to a couple of boys. Mm. Mm. That, yeah. that, that would be very dark, though. Mm. If she, I mean, it does make it sound as though him. Littlefinger and Lynn Corbray are in some kind of like secret underground Westerosi paedophile ring, and that's how he's managed to. I mean, there find has out. to be like, yeah. there, like we've we've talked about this before. It can't just be Euron. Mm. There would have to be other. I mean, Littlefinger has mentioned it before. Yeah, that he he will he can get anything you want in his brothel. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. really creepy. Hard to get them at the eerie though, right? Mm. and keep it quiet or hard to get them in the veil and keep it quiet maybe for a highborn i don't know when winter comes there's only going to be yeah it's it's not even bare mention so she a, a lot of people when they're dismissing sansa and sansa's performance in king's landing mm. apart from it being absolutely harrowing and traumatic for her um tend to forget that she is she picks up on things really quickly, Sansa. She's she's figured this out, and this is a big. If you look at if what we're doing on this reread is what lessons are we learning about the characters, about the situation, about the story, about how it. Because we're doing this in hindsight, we know where we're up to already in the in the current story. If we're looking at what are we learning from each of these chapters, this chapter tells us that. Only Sansa could have figured that out. I could put you put swap Arya and Sansa in the situations they're in at the moment. Arya would never have figured that out. No. She probably wouldn't have even been motivated enough to be even interested in what was going on. She would have been focusing on completely different things. So she's really honing her skills here. I know, like um, LMR says, Lancer, uh, Sansa oh, learns hi, from LMR. Sansa learns from the best, which is uh, absolutely correct. She's learning from Littlefinger here. And from Cersei. And from Cersei, yeah, she has, she has, Cersei. yeah, yeah. Cersei and knows, we spoke about this before, Cersei's mental, but she knows exactly what everybody's doing in the room, or yeah. or, or at least assumes what everybody She thinks and she does, yeah, yeah. She thinks she does, but yeah. at the same time, it may not all be paranoia, Especially when it comes to the Tyrells. I think we are going to get to a point where, in the in Sansa's point of view, later on down the line, maybe in Wins, where we get that sense of, yeah, Peter, I know that you think you know exactly what's going on here, but I've surpassed you. I, I I've elevated way past this, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you think that I think. You know, she's she's just going to completely piss all over his chips completely and i think she's going to get rid of him by i just thought it was interesting that his that corbray's motivations are boys ki killing and gold and i think the killing part of that it's almost like a you should, you, that, that was the one mistake you made there peter you're giving her your ammunition without even realizing what you're doing because it's, it's just i don't know something about sansa that catches him off guard or you know he's in love with her or whatever but well, that she's gonna she's yeah she's gonna be his downfall without a doubt and and i think that i think we learn in this chapter that that's how it's going to happen she's gonna she's gonna uh flip the whole corbray situation around and well, the killing part of that will be kill little finger well and I think she'll take out, she could potentially then get rid of Corbray by using the Royce mm -hmm. element there. Hi, Bubba. Um, the, in the show, that's mm. certainly, they kind of, I loved, I love Royce and I wish they'd given him more time in the show, but they definitely kind of allude to that. He's beside her at uh, the Battle of the Bastards. Then he's in the Stark Hall. He's got a, quite a prominent position when when they take out little fingers so i think in the books she'll use that mm. there will be an element of royce knows all along what she's up to or mm. get takes out corbray before i can't imagine the royce is getting 
getting wiped out at the end of this. Yeah. We started with them. I doubt we're going to see them die out at the end. But um, yeah, uh, so that's it for me for Elaine One. Did you have anything else? Just a very broad general question that I know neither of us can answer at this stage. But what the heck are those tapestries all about? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, they, uh, little fingers talking here about oh you know it looks like I'm going to have to remove Cersei from the game if she doesn't like trip herself up so are these tapestries tapestries something that's going to from little fingers point of view seal Cersei's fate is there something in there that reveals something about her heritage or her you know that just that ultimate well, you're out of the game and this is the proof of it because there is something about Lar Lannister heritage I definitely want to talk about with her chapter coming up. Um, mm. But maybe it goes back to your grand first men conspiracy. Mm. Maybe it charts the names of the, the, the first men, the Targ mm. loyalists. Mm. Like we've got a lot of that going on between this chapter and Viren's chapters. So because mm. it's still a bit like, I mean, we get um I can't remember if it's oh yeah Estermont in the in Cersei's chapter like the Estermonts have switched alliances all over the place mm -hmm. and it's like well if you switch alliances that much like where do you reach where do you find your center yeah is it yeah. back to your first men roots is it back to like mm -hmm. if people are going to buy you as a highborn family they're going to mm -hmm. need to know okay you were Baratheon, are you genuine? Targ, yeah. Like, who, yeah. who are you? So maybe yeah. that's something in the tapestries. Maybe. Could be. Could be. Um, Bubba says, flip on Corbury and let sweet Robin pitch for once, perhaps. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that would be really sweet if she let, if somehow sweet Robin killed Littlefinger. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be interesting. It, the, 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 just to remind everybody who isn't, actually reading the chapters with us that the Lord's Declarant are called the Lord's Declarant because they signed a document that where they de they declared to protect Sweet Robin and the Vale. And um, they wanted so, to so remove Littlefinger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But at the end of the chapter, Littlefinger asked them all for a year to set the Vale to rights. And obviously there was the big showdown with Corbray, which was all for show, and he's manipulated them. Or so he thinks. Let's, um, let's not yeah. forget, though, this is a Song of Ice and Fire. Things could get very dark yeah. if Littlefinger overplays his hand and yeah. somehow they figure out that Robert isn't John Aaron's son or becomes apparent. Something very nasty could happen to Robert as well. You can see why he doesn't want to leave because he, just because of the eerie, uh, the, the description in this chapter of how the last little bit of the ascent, you're either going up in a basket or you've got to climb the last it's, 600 feet through. It's basically magic he's, if you can get up. Yeah, he, he's completely isolated himself from any risks, any. He's in the safest place he can be at the moment for plotting for whatever his plan's going to be. But I think I mean, it's kind of it makes you wonder what are they going to do with eight thousand men? Like, I mean, what can you do? You can't do uh, anything with eight thousand no. men. But anyway, no. um, let's go into Cersei Five. Oh, sorry. There, just just one last thing though about about I think that I think there really is this element of Peter declaring oh Cersei's not as clever as she thinks she is she thinks she knows this she thinks she knows that but actually there's somebody else in the story looking at Peter and thinking exactly the same thing oh Peter you're not quite as clever as you as you really think you are and I think there's an element of the Lord's Declarant and potentially Sansa definitely as, as, as the story progresses where that's going to be much more apparent oh Peter you know you yeah. think you're so clever and but actually you know she's letting him the fact that this chapter is called elaine and it's the first yeah. part where she figures out like a major plot that he's mm -hmm. he has underway suggests that for him mm -hmm. not like she is has she is very convincing as elaine for him yeah so he won't suspect it i don't think that's why it's no longer a Sansa POV, right? So potentially this is the seminal chapter for Sansa as well, yeah, right back off the back. back. But yeah, back to back with those two sisters. Again, there are more parallels than than we like to believe. But um, yeah. yeah, interesting chapter. 
So then we get into our longest chapter this week, um, Cersei 5. Uh, it's the longest, but I, I didn't have a huge amount um, that I wanted to talk about. It, it's very long because it's kind of showing, like, Cersei is juggling quite a lot. She's rambling in her head quite a bit. So I think mm. it's just kind of to reflect that descent almost into this madness and um, just this kind of maniacal power hunger that she has it's just she's distancing herself from Tommen she's completely given up on Jamie um Marjorie is now her biggest threat mm. completely throws the iron bank out she's getting fat she's drinking more um is she pregnant um maybe I don't know if it'll be Jamie's though it wouldn't be Jamie's I very much doubt it would be Jamie's so it does this really obvious bit in the chapter where she's being Cersei and she's blaming the stupid seamstresses for messing up her clothes and they're doing something too something's happening where they're they're making her yeah. clothes tighter her clothes. yeah and if she's I mean she's she's drinking quite a lot as well but um her tits are sagging as she says and it's yeah, like yeah well yeah, yeah. That might mean that she's starting to come into milk. That's yeah. not necessarily putting on weight, right? Like she's, if you put on weight that fast, it doesn't necessarily go to your breasts. Like it's that would suggest to me that that could be like her being pregnant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I completely think. I, I, again, you know, we've only just started to get into Cersei's head. She's being I, not that I'm she's, suggesting that she would have been rational before uh, if she wasn't pregnant but I, I just think that um oh god there's now i'll tell you what i think about this chapter is that it reveals a lot about cersei's just complete grip on wanting her hour in the sun and nothing nobody will take this away from her and it looks like Jamie is she's she's ridding herself of all of the things that she thinks will prevent her from having this hour in the sun. So she wants to get rid of Marjorie. She's all all, all almost well, she is not almost. She's thinking about getting rid of Jamie. Like yeah. he's I'm done with that now. Um she also starts thinking a lot about her past in terms of how, just how much she was like puppy dog eyes completely in love with Rhaegar when she was a little girl and not only that this feeling this massive motivation that she had to be queen via marrying this like I mean, it's almost like how Sansa felt about Joffrey well I was just going to say because sometimes the shifts in what she's thinking about it's almost very hormonal yes right? yeah, yeah and it could be a pregnancy thing yeah, yeah it could be i mean friends of mine who are talk who who were pregnant talk about having mummy brain and you're kind of all over the place mm -hmm. like your emotions and stuff um but if you think about it the only two povs that are in dance i think this is right that are in dance and uh feast are aria and, and uh, cersei right yeah so they're easily two of our most psychologically challenged or psychologically fragile povs i mean with the exception of damp hair but i mean they it's no wonder that they both appear in dance if you mm. know what i mean so mm -hmm. um i think you're right i think she's there's something i mean she's ignoring it's not just the wanting to get rid of Jamie. She's also putting distance between herself and Tommen. And like Tommen just wants his mum, right? And she's just like, I can't be dealing with him. And he's not getting the Iron Throne. Marjorie can keep asking, but he's not getting the Iron Throne, mm -hmm. which I, I, I guess Marjorie wants him to take the Iron Throne. That means she'll have the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I think Cersei wants the Iron Throne because she wants the Iron Throne. But there's also, I want to believe that somewhere deep down inside of Cersei, even if she doesn't think of it, there's a maternal instinct to protect Tommen. The Iron Throne is actually a very dangerous thing and you could mm. easily get killed on the Iron Throne. Mm. Um, mm. So I, I'm, I, I'm loving wife, 
of a nine-year-old might actually recognize that if she knew her history yeah. as well um, and yeah. the thing that that is a real red flag for me is Kyburn. Uh, and yeah. this is after the queen maker timeline wise this is after the queen maker um, I did a bit of research. <laughs> um, mm. So I was interested in Kyber and coming to her about this Estermont story. And I was like, what's the story with Estermont again? And Estermont is married off to somebody. There's like a, I don't know, 50 year difference in age. Mm. Mm. Now I can't remember. I forgot to write it down. The, the girl that he's married to. Yeah. Sa she... uh, Senna? Senna, is that right? No. I can't. Anyway, she yeah. is uh, Ariane's best friend. Yeah. And her punishment is to be married off to this Estermont guy mm, mm. by Doran. Now, Estermont is the great uncle of Robert Baratheon, Renly mm -hmm. Baratheon, and Stannis Baratheon. And Estermont sided with Renly, then moved what, over to Stannis. Wasn't their mother an Estermont? Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. he moved over to Stannis, and then he was bought up in front of Joffrey when Joffrey dragged them all up and switched back to joffrey right mm. that's the way it went but now he's doing deals with dorn and cersei's like mm. why should i care why should i care blah, blah, blah. i'm not like had that been tywin or Tyrion? imagine being in Tyrion's head when he heard that mm. wait 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 what what mm. what did he just do why that what's going on there what's yeah. what's this all about yeah. that would be a massive red flag interesting Kyburn, I think it's so interesting that Kyburn brings this up because I think he's testing Cersei. I think he's saying, just how much is she aware of what's going on? Mm. I'll just I'll just put this in front of her. Mm. Uh Silva, thank you so much. Um spotted Silva, that's right. Mm. Thank you, Connie. Hi Connie. Um I wonder is Kyburn going, let's just see. I'll just check out here now and see. So did you hear about Esther Mountain? And if she ignores yeah. it, then we're is she all just good. playing dumb? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. all good. She's not. She's not paying attention to. These is things. there another layer to Cersei that's more the devious? Than we all think? The Estermonts are quite sneaky. Um, yeah. And yeah. you know, especially if you, you have to be careful of Baratheon loyalists as well, because are they potential Targaryen loyalists? This mm. is my thing. Mm. So. Um, yeah, the uh, the only other thing that I wanted to mention was the Lannister heritage that you brought up. Uh, yeah, interesting that Tywin was uh, she was refused. I kind of missed this part of it. She was refused. The marriage between her and Rhaegar was refused because Aerys saw the Lannisters as servants. Mm. And does this have to do with something with Lan the Clever when he kind of tricked? He kind of tricked his way into being highborn, right? Mm -hmm. So the Lannisters are maybe not that respected in Westeros because they're not really highborn. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like um, George in Poldark, actually. Now that I think of it, but uh, yeah, that they they kind of they're they're going to constantly be proving themselves because they're not actually legitimate in the eyes of the real highborn, the old mm -hmm. old families um, and it would really only be noble the noble class who would even delve anywhere near into any of this because the small folk are just they wouldn't know the history of that that's just like this old you know this old powerful house that's been along around a long time that might link into what we were talking about with the tapestries maybe there's a story there that reveals the Lannisters should just Absolutely. be wiped out like that, completely just discredited as complete imposters. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. it must, it must, it must be a, it must needle at a mm. lot of high noble houses that these kind of commoners are on the throne and that there's rumours of incest. Mm. Mm. Um, bad enough that Robert Baratheon married one. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. maybe maybe i don't know if they're seen as commoners but that seems like little finger can't escape that and little finger actually does have like a bit of a bit of kudos but he can never escape that so it seems as if the lannisters are struggling with that as well mm -hmm. um did you have anything else then with cersei's chapter um there's been news of davos being beheaded that's right but we know that that's not true there's there's something unique and different about listening to the audio version that gives me m more to think about than if I was just reading. And an example of that is 
when Roy Detrice does Tommen's voice and does Sweet Robin's voice, they sound exactly the same. Oh, really? They're very kind of like me, 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 like little, like little whiny boys, basically. Um, like oh no 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 no, I I I must have it. I'm the king. I'm the I'm the lord. I'm the you know that kind of childish sort of whiny whingy behaviour. They are children, obviously, but. I just it, it just made me think I, there's something that seems quite similar from how it's being portrayed by Roy Trees. Tommen and, and Sweet Robin seem quite similar and then it's like well what's the connection the connection is this is what happens to young boys when their mothers are so horrific with them like Cersei and like Lysa you know crazy. there's there's yeah yeah um there's I, what, is there anything in the fact that I love the fact that he asks for a kitten from Cersei and uh, uh, Marjorie gives him three kittens? <laughs> yes. Well, your mom won't give you one kitten. Here's three. Yes. It's great. Well, kittens are baby cats. Mm -hmm. And three black kittens are seen in it we're told in this chapter that three bad kittens symbolize bad luck to me those three black kittens symbolize cersei's three children yeah um yeah. and that's the bad luck so yeah it's he should have really called them tom and joffrey and Mar marcella because they are the three black kittens unless you know it's three heads of dragon and tom is a secret targaryen <laughs> could possibly possibly um there's a, a really wonderful example at the very end of this chapter about how you can read something complete two completely different ways um and it's when when liana's mentioned and she's think oh, it, it, not only did liana steal Rhaegar, if you believe the whole, you know, they ran off together to the Tower of Joy. But she also, uh, in his mind, took Robert as well. So she really was the enemy as far as Cersei was concerned in terms of like love matches and love rivalries, um, which makes me wonder whether or not there could have any been ever anything between Jamie and Lyanna um because she does seem to be the consistent love rival to Rhaegar oh, Robert good. you know you know yeah. did did anything happen there potentially but also at the very end of this chapter Cersei thinks to herself um if only it hadn't have been for my father um that uh he wouldn't have looked at the wolf girl and the he is the bit where it's does she mean Rhaegar or Robert. Or you mean Robert, yeah. So it's a it's just a good example of how you can hear a character thinking about something, and when they say he, yes, it's not necessarily who you perhaps think it is. So the other question underneath that is: Did Cersei know that Rhaegar ran off with Lyanna and that they had this child together? And does she even potentially know who the child is? I mean, it's Cersei, so doubtful, mm, but I mean, it's just these little slips that come into the dialogue that make you think, oh. Little finger almost certainly does, but I don't know if Cersei, I mean, it's definitely, there's a pronoun problem for sure. I mean, mm. that's something that Preston points out in relation to the kings, the king, the queen maker, I should say, and to mm. the soil night chapters. Yeah. There are certain ambiguous pronouns that get mm. thrown out. Mm. Like she and he. Sometimes. If he only hadn't, and it's like, well, which, you know, that you could be talking about two different characters there. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, Bronn has been knocking off Stokeworths by the sound of it. Yeah. Which, which is no big surprise, but. Um, it's only a matter of time before he kills his wife, right? Well, yeah, uh, uh, and he he te or at least the whoever is holding him, him back from being the Lord of Stokeworth. But Cersei tells, um, basically, Cersei commands that Bronn is killed. She kind of 
drops it into conversation with Kyburn. You know, just make sure that that that. No, she doesn't. Not with Kyburn. Sorry, with the Stoke with the words and say, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they're yeah. sort of like, oh, oh, and she's and she's feigning like again, this could be a pregnancy emotional thing. She kind of drops a guard and oh, it's been terrible. And you know, my my tree or my only true friends. Um, but she basically kind of nod, nod, wink, wink, just get rid of him, get rid of Bron. Yeah, which um, they want to do anyway. Can I yes. can I just point out as well, like, Cersei has to have food with them and, like, entertain them for an entire evening to get mm. what she wants from them. Mm -hmm. Littlefinger just needs a meeting. Like, it's just the, the there is a, such a double standard for what a woman needs to do in order to... I, I don't want to, like, say, oh, it's hard being a bad guy if you're a woman. But it is kind of like it does take an awful lot more effort for Cersei to get to yeah. achieve those kind of things. Whereas the men in the story, so it's no wonder that she's driven mad. Is my is my is my point? Do you know? Because you have to keep up that kind of like, oh yeah, it's for all friends. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Ages. yeah, yeah. And like yeah. Littlefinger only has to do it for a few minutes at a time or whatever yes. it is. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, although he did have to sleep with Lysa. Yeah, which is worse. She's, yeah, she's, she's she 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 does her best to try and put the airs and graces on and be the whole, oh, you know, uh, grieving daughter and all that kind of thing. But the the only other thing that I've got is um, this issue about a new master at arms in King's Landing. Mm -hmm. Is there is there? I can't remember. This is a detail that I can't remember. She thinks about getting a Dornishman. That would be a good idea. It appears the Dornish, and you know, she can get a new master of arms, and they're pretty good, uh, skilled at arms. He can train Tom and not mm -hmm. bloody Loras, you know, get rid of it. But do we ever in the story get that new oh, ma master at arms? I can't remember. I can't remember. Because I'm thinking if she, like, if Cersei needs a new master at arms and she's focused on getting a Dornishman wouldn't be wouldn't it be who is skilled at arms wouldn't it be hilarious if Darkstar turns up <laughs> in King's Landing and becomes the new master at arms well it would certainly suggest that Doran knew what he was doing yeah if that yeah. happens if that mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. that would be interesting a master mm -hmm. of arms is almost like like it's kind of like a blacksmith in a town if somebody comes in and takes over you're kind of safe because you'll always be needed regardless yeah. of who's in control so it's a good it's a good position to be in for sure mm -hmm. that would be really interesting if yeah. it was him really really interesting yeah but um yeah i don't have anything else for cersei 5 it was a long chapter but it was a long chapter yeah i think that's i, I don't much... think i don't think we need to talk about maggie's prophecy because i think it'll be coming up soon in more detail so there's a there's a little tiny nugget in here about picel being right <laughs> but what well, ultimately he is proven right mm -hmm. he tries to warn cersei that not to go with or or and walters uh, waters sorry or and waters and all the captains that he's trying to get into the royal fleet because basically they're just pirates yeah and what he's saying to cersei is that the captains that should be commanding her royal fleet should be seasoned and have proven loyalty um how right was he ultimately with that with that? he was basically predicting you're going to get shafted cersei if no, you just go I down mean... this road and that's exactly what happens from from the first like from the first time we really meet him in a game of thrones with it or a couple of chapters into a game of thrones i think it is maybe it's clash with Tyrion. actually uh Pycelle is way smarter than he lets on way yeah. way smarter yeah that's why i would pay attention to lines and nuggets that he drops like things yeah. like the veil and things like that because he he's 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 he d he didn't get into that position by being stupid. That's for sure. No, he's but and he's doing his job. He's trying mm -hmm. to whether he's a Lannister sympathizer or not. He's trying to tell the yeah. regent, look, I, I'm counselling you here. Mm -hmm. I am the Grand Meister. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you this. You know, I predict if you do this, this is what the consequences are going to be. Da, da, da. And she's just, mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, we don't know. Yeah. Like he still might be an agent of Varys. Like yeah, he. he he spent a long time in 
the black cells. It may be that like mm. virus kills him because he knows too much. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was a long one. That was way longer than we we were. Yes, talking. it was. I've got to go. I've still not eaten yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now getting a bit kind of like, oh, I need to eat. But next yeah. week yeah. we've got Brienne again. We've got Sam chapter. We reconnect with Jamie. Uh, we go Jamie. we go back to Cersei. Uh, I know that there's some weird lesbian stuff that goes on with Cersei. I'm, yeah. I'm prophesizing that it's probably this chapter. Um, I'm really looking forward to the that moment that moment in with the High Septon. Um, and then we have the Reaver as well, which I think is Victorian. Reaver is Victorian, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So um, I think it's Victorian. It's not Asher. It is no, it is Victorian. Yeah. yeah. So another interesting grouping of chapters. Absolutely. So thank you so much to everybody for joining us. I have left uh, that Preston Jacobs video that I've been referencing Johnny's uh, channel. I'll definitely be there in the chat on Tuesday, so you can come along and do some mm. things with me. And what uh, time will that be? Kat? It'll be six o'clock your time. Six o'clock. Yeah. Six p.m. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Six o'clock UK time, seven my time. So if you're in Europe, well, mm. if I'm back from working time, I'll try and join in in the chat. I've just, um, I thought I was already subscribed, but I don't know, YouTube. Uh, I've resubscribed to uh, Johnny's channel. Brilliant, excellent. Mm. So yeah. yeah, if you can join us, uh, if you can join us in the chat, I'll definitely be there anyway. Um, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people will because I don't know if anyone has done this before, at least in the communities that I've been in done a reread of the world of rice and fire not so, in i've had lots of reviews i've listened to lots of reviews of world of rice and fire not like like age but, by age is what they're going into. yeah like yeah really, i'm exactly. really looking forward so it's yeah. the dawn age so i'm gonna do some oh more. my god right okay and right that's gonna be that's gonna be a long one yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so guys and girls have a great week claire thank you so much claire is linked down below if you want to go see some nails i'm gonna go watch your video <laughs> now while i brush my teeth <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> Bye.